But I started as a painter, but I think I was never really satisfied with uh, this illusionary space, but I really like flat spaces. So I think my paintings are kind of a combination of sculpture and painting, and I would always um, glue stuff on the painting, actual objects and stuff like that. And later I started kind of borrowing, appropriating different images from um, different animation, uh, different cartoons that I found. And it was right like the beginning of the internet. I remember the school I went to was, um, they had a really slow network, um, but I was able to find these Japanese like manga kind of characters and mix it. And that was in Israel. So mix it with like Walt Disney kind of uh, animation, like cartoons. I was still not really satisfied with that. And I moved to New York. And I had this huge bag of all my source materials, like slides and stuff, because I would take pictures of stuff that I would download or comics book uh, that I would um, order. And I, it, it was all lost on my way to New York. So it was kind of a blessing because it really gave me a push to, to start doing video, which is at that point what I really wanted to do. The process is, you know, it's always like a very long, long process when I, when I do, even if I do a short video, I don't, for, I don't shoot it. Um, I've been working on the last four pieces with Mahaya Tusi, is that my amazing cinematographer, and he kind of been developing a relationship over time that gets, gets easier and easier to work together. Um, you know, but it really starts from the way keeping my head blank instead of uh, taking in information it's like becoming a sponge like kind of clearing up space like mental space mm -hmm. for ideas to come in <laughs> um i guess each piece starts with like one thing that i i kind of spin from I, I look at images, I don't filter like art images and non-art images, so um, there's a lot of pieces I'm influenced in uh, with, uh, there's also, you know, like this laundromat in Harlem had this amazing stains in the ceiling, uh, that's like a huge influence for me, like, you know, like, just walking in the street or not thinking, you know, just spacing out, just feeling uh, my own kind of existence. <laughs> uh, there's no, I don't know, it's kind of all like a big salad. So it, it feels very artificial for me to say, okay, that's my influences. I feel like it would be a lie because uh, honestly, I'm way more like self-absorbed than, than um, I mean, I know a lot of artists are in constant dialogue. They constantly like, look at art and kind of situate themselves in a relationship to that. And I don't do that. What I admire about the people that I use in this body of work is that they really inhabit, inhabit their bodies in a way that is really empowering for me. And uh, they use it as a tool and it's a lot of the time in a way to make a living. Of, so they're like, they rent out their body. Thinking about your body as your possession. Like, where does that end? Like, you also can modify even by making art in the way you are you know commodifying your spirit